Let's Welcome to the No Love Podcast, where we decrease tomorrow's divorce rate today by teaching singles and couples alike how to experience love on purpose and not by chance. I'm your host, Edward L. Fairley, accompanied by my wonderful, lovely co-host, Michelle Larkin. Michelle, say hi to the people. It's No Love Thursday. It's No <laughs> Love Thursday. Hey, y'all. Yes, today. No Love Thursday. Before we get into what No Love Thursday means to her, what you got going on, man? Share, share what's going on, man. <laughs> oh, my gosh. First of all, I'm just grateful. There's so much I'm just so excited about. But God is awesome, number one, hands down, every day, all day. Amen. And Amen. I have been sharing in my uh, webinars and in my talks about how to move like the queen that you are. Mm. And, and the quote that we have to say, right, is that I move like the queen that I am. And I have had to do that this week myself. Overcome, mm. overcoming insecurities and made a bold ask for a career move and yeah. I am just really excited about how that's playing out and I would well, I just have to say that God meets you at the point of your need and <laughs> then some and it's no love Thursday so I don't know what he gonna do on top of what he's already done but I'm just like okay <laughs> I'm just gonna sit back and be like okay all right. I don't know what homie gonna teach tonight, but I like. Right. Oh, we're we're definitely teaching tonight. There's no taking no days off, no matter what no love Thursday uh means. Uh, is that your way of saying you you're done with sharing? Because that I was mean, that's. I, got, I, got, I know that I am done sharing for the moment, but uh, the knowing love is a journey that never ends. So mm. being done for the moment is never done. Do you know what okay. I mean? Like, even what I'm saying, when I say I move like the queen that I am and I'm watching God meet me at the point of my need and meet others at the point of their need, that's like one of the prayers I made after, I want to think the last session that we had. I want to say it was the last mm -hmm. session. One of the prayers I asked God was, show me what love looks like and show me what it feels like from your perspective. That's and good. I'm that's just... Good. <laughs> that's, a that's a great prayer um i have it on my i have a sticker on my my lap, my screen on my computer show me what love looks like and feels like and let me be that love that you are expecting us to be like let me be that so let me show what me feels like show me what it looks like and let me be it and i'm like i don't even know what that means but i'm watching it go <laughs> that's good that's real good. that's a great prayer um I guess let me go into what <laughs> what she means by today is no love day. It's no love Thursday. <laughs> Y'all need to be like this right here. I'm just, I'm trying to behave. Okay, so what, what she means by it is no love Thursday. So today was the official no love app launch day. Woo! So. Yes, it was. <laughs> yes. It was. <laughs> yes, it was. Uh, so, No Love is now available not only on Idro uh, Android, it is on iOS, Apple, the Apple Store. So, um, no one is left out. As I stated before, I was not Where's going the to theme music? <laughs> pause for the cause. It's No Love Thursday. Amen. Yes, he did it. He launched it. He pushed the button. It's out there. <laughs> This has been a long, long journey, as I posted on Facebook. Um, I've had a lot of disappointments, a lot of miscarriages. Um, and, but today, uh, we, we birthed a very strong and growing baby. And y'all's support has been amazing. And I'm so grateful and appreciative of it. And um, I've been working on this for years um it started as a, a board game now i'm able to um disperse it to everyone for free via an app so there's no excuses it's free to download but it can cost your relationship if you don't do it and um and i just um i'm happy to say that is now available the first phase of the no love app which is the actual simulation in the game um the game aspect of it um or the game version of what it's going to evolve. Speaking of it evolving, um, the No Love 
www.thebrandingcoach.com uh, uh, website <laughs> is, <laughs> is also available. This is going to be where we all can uh, meet up, talk about these shows. So it's a place where you can comment. If you've never seen me or heard of me or you can't meet us on Facebook, you can go to no love inc.com and go to the podcast section you can comment on these shows share your feedback your experiences uh you can get updates on the app at the no love inc.com show you can register so any kind of sales anything to know about no love whether it be my book um uh audio version uh the the book version the the uh, pdf version uh merchandise no love t-shirts <laughs> the actual board game all of that stuff will be at that central location and you can subscribe for free to that page which will make sure that you'll get an email of any kind of updates again whether it be discounts or updated to know information about no love updated podcasts things of that nature um, you'll be notified when those things are available on that respective platform again this is just a way for me to better connect with everyone not everyone meets at the uh, at Facebook or YouTube or uh, LinkedIn or wherever you all are getting the content from. Uh, so if you want to interact directly with me, you can meet us at noloveinc.com. That's K-N-O-W-L-O-V-E-I-N-C.com. Uh, please give me feedback about the app. Uh, the evolution of where the app is headed is broken down there and you can even donate there some people I, I didn't i forgot about it um some people were donating uh to uh towards the evolution of where the app is headed uh, because it's free and they just want to help the movement and i'm just grateful for all of you all so i, I really appreciate that and michelle she looks like she's about to go to the bathroom or something i'm holding her from speaking go ahead and share go ahead. I'm sorry. well homie just said in his calm way was that after several years of development, of prayer, of trying, of thinking, I remember sitting at the table with this man with a piece of cardboard and some construction paper and him talking about, I want to have a game and I want it to do this and I want it to change the world and I want it to change relationships. And I'm just saying in his very calm way, and you know what's out there and you can visit us at No Love Inc. And I'm just saying, and I'm like, hey, 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 hold on black business entrepreneurship overcoming like this is like the day that we're gonna look back i a year from now and be like oh my god the intention and the reality have intersected lives have been changed the idea is not an idea it is a reality and everybody who has been so gracious to join us on this journey so kind to share their thoughts so generous to buy the shirts, to invest in him, anybody, you know, all of his clients, like the book, everybody, everybody who's touched no love on some level or the relationship, like you and I always get the name of the book wrong, but the book, <laughs> but everybody has a chance to now participate in the development of the baby into a global influencer on positively impacting relationships. It is something customizable. Your experience is your own because you get to play out the cards the way that they are dealt to you. Your answers are your own. Your experiences are your own. You get to coach yourself through a whole relate. Now, I had the privilege of being a guinea pig. So, I'm just saying, join me. <laughs> Join me in the journey. This is just my uh, PSA with a slightly elevated enthusiasm. Now back to our regularly scheduled. Please join us at noloveinc.com <laughs> for more information on the exciting <laughs> product that we have just launched. As, Go visit. As, as you can see, uh, in, in the, the aspect of our dynamic, <laughs> She is the yin to my yang. <laughs> I promise you, everything that she just expressed is what I feel. Um, uh, but the 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 thinker and the um, it's 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 too much. It's a lot more to do. It's a lot. Like this is just 
the the tip of the iceberg as to where I would like to go. Um, and I'm thinking, okay, this is done. Now I can start headed to where I want to go. So uh, yes, I celebrate. Um, yes, I'm grateful. Yes, I'm happy. I'm excited. This is No Love's app's birthday. Um, yes, uh, so is. I will be forever, yes. not to mention my, like today is the seventh. So that is the number of completion. Um, so uh, it, it's, it's just, it's great. I'm definitely uh, excited. Please reach out to me. I already saw someone on um, Apple. <clears throat> they did a, they, they wrote an actual, um, they gave it five stars and gave their summary. Um, the feedback has been great. Um, I've been get, get, asking for permission. I had one guy send me a text message because he won the game, which I'm, I'm kind of jealous of how fast that happened. Because I'm like, what in the world? Like, he was playing all day. He didn't tell you. He was playing all day. All I'm day. like, no. <laughs> Between the time that he downloaded, because he sent me a screenshot of that, and the fact that he won, I'm like, wait, what? Hold on. No. That is, relationship. That is, they come out the gate. They get that happily oh my ever God. after. No, nah, that's great. But I'm, I'm saying that for those of you who I'm going to tell you right, right now, you're going to want to throw your phone. <laughs> you're going to want to break your phone. You're going to want to bend your phone. Uh, you're going to want to throw it. So, um, my, my feedback to anyone listening and anyone who downloads the game or simulation is what it really is, um, is the, may the best person learn and the luckiest person win. Um, and, 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 and it's not something that if you catch yourself getting frustrated, please be mindful that that's probably how that's you're life. approaching your relationship right now. That's life. And this is just me condensing the learning process into a simulated game so that um so that you don't have to spend years as opposed to a few hours learning what it is that you will learn indirectly through these experiences i promise you you're going to reflect on stuff that you've done be uh um exposed to things that you're doing and you're you're going to it's gonna call it's gonna cause a lot of digging and a lot of, i got a lot of text messages really hit home Oh my gosh, these these cars and everything like that. You have absolutely no control in the game. I'm gonna tell you that right now. Um, you can advance sometimes in cars, it gives you an option, and you can advance to relationship or marriage when you get the card, but those are a few and far in between. Um, but ultimately you have zero control, nor do you have control in your current or respective relationship. You do have control over what you do, but uh not so much as uh, as we think. Put it this way. COVID-19 helped you realize how much control you have over your life. That's the best way I could put it. And this simulation uh, uh, shows that you can learn um, through that lack of control, um, which in turn gives you control over how you approach your relationships in the future. So, um, NoLoveInc.com. NoLoveInc.com. Did you put a video out, a sample of it out on your Facebook page or something? Yeah, well, that's that's on NoLoveInc.com. Uh, no Love, the No Love um, YouTube channel, it's there. It's also, if you go to the app section on the NoLoveInc.com website, you'll see the actual commercial for No Love. You'll be able to click on a link to go directly to the app on the respective platform that you would you use it on. the screen and Apple the or Android. I'm sorry? You should have shared the screen and played the commercial. Oh, yeah. Uh, Next week. about that. Maybe next time, yeah. Uh, so uh, we have we have forever. Uh, so so. Happy birthday, um, Nola. We we're gonna put a period there and get to work. Uh, you all came for the No Love podcast. I appreciate the celebration, um, but it's time to go to work. Um, and I, I have a confession. The reason why we didn't have this show last week is because this show is going to be heavy this week. And it was supposed to be last week's show, but I didn't even feel equipped enough to present it for you. That's how heavy this show is. It's probably the most important show that I've ever done. And if you master and grasp this, it probably will um, help you with anything revolving around the, the three triangles of no love. But God put this on me heavy to actually um, speak about 
and again, this was last week, but I literally talked talk to Michelle last week. I said, yo, I don't, I don't feel right with what he gave me. I had to go back to studying and, um, and praying on, for one, like why he was so adamant that I, I, I spoke on this topic today. It's not going to be presented in a manner that it, it's been. So the structure is not even the same. And I, and I personally don't even really feel uh, he, equipped to share right now, but uh, there's no more delaying it. I don't feel as uncomfortable as I did last week where I just said, no, I can't do the show because I won't do it justice. So I'm just going to allow him to do what he does through me and pray that uh, this heavy lifting leaves you a little bit lighter at the end of the show. Um, I, you won't even know what we're talking about until we get to uh, the middle aspect of it. So when I first start, I'll, I'll be talking about two different concepts to better introduce what it is that we really need to dive into today. Is that fair? That's so fair. If you, if you feel a little lost, I promise you, if you take this ride with me, you will get to the destination with me. And um, prayerfully, we will all leave a little lighter than this, um, this rooted issue is, is, um, is having us walk. Um, on this uh, gravitational pull that we live in, okay? All right, so let's dive in. So the two things that we're going to talk about very, very briefly, briefly, but it will better allow me to transition into what we're going to actually be talking about is I did, and that's I, D-I-D, versus I am, Okay. And, and let me kind of go back to what this would probably bring a lot of clarity to, especially people who are close to me, um, because this is why it was, it, it was how it was presented to me. Like, yo, you need to explain to the people why it's easy for you to do certain things that they feel might be considered callous, cold, and not be reading it correctly. So it's some things that I say, or people hear me say, or how short it, it takes for me to transition from what I did or said and then move on to just me being who I am. And this topic should better understand it if I teach it or do it justice. So, um, and what I mean by things like, for example, I think the show, the last show that we, that we did was, which was three, was it three the hard way? Yeah, it was three the hard way. <laughs> So I shared how I, I, I did the whole thing with going to see my brother, didn't wear my mask, and I apologized because it was stupid. It was, it was dumb. I shared how dumb it was, how inconsiderate it was, um, and how it took my, mom, my wife more than the three days that it typically does for her to, quote unquote, forgive me and go back to norm. But after I shared what I felt, I was done with apologizing. <laughs> And I moved on to who I was. She wasn't really speaking to me or receptive to me for pretty much a week. And um, I was okay with that. And I moved along life like I guess I never did it, so to speak. Um, so I apologize. I stated it. I stated what I, uh, what I did and what I recognized, and I moved on. Um, you all have heard me either directly or indirectly, if you think hard enough, say, that I am to die for. You've heard me make statements like that. I, I, I'm to die for, like someone's died for me. Uh, uh, so for me to not love myself or for me to be concerned about whether you love me or not, I'm, I'm literally to die for from a God who demoted himself to a human being to die for me. Like my value is, is too big for me to be caring about how you feel about me. You've heard me make statements like that. Um, you heard me uh, say like, Michelle, she gets so concerned when I make a statement that she might feel uh, uh, is offensive to someone, whether it be a response on this show or a statement that is uh, just made. And I'm, I'm dead serious about it. But she's like, oh, it comes across, across so it sounds like it could be offensive or hurtful. And I'm like, I, I really, I, I don't care. <laughs> like, that's how I, how I felt. And I'm, I'm sharing that to better, again, set this up. So uh, I, I said all that to go right back to I did versus I am. Okay. So 
let's let's clarify what those are and this, this won't take long and again this for one this is not going to be a long show it is going to be a heavy show it's not going to be an uncomfortable show you know how i say you know how I say we're going to have an uncomfortable show you're not going to be uncomfortable but this is a very heavy topic that i really really pray and i'm almost begging for you to just listen and and hopefully master um you won't do it today but i hope you put the uh, the steps and process to get there so i did versus i am so Yes, I did do something stupid on that day with the whole COVID situation. But am I stupid? Not in the least of it. Um, you might have uh, your spouse uh, say to you, uh, that was dumb. But notice they said that was dumb, meaning the action that you did was dumb. And oftentimes we hear that was dumb and we conclude Oh, so now I'm dumb. It's the difference between I did versus I am. And that can be from someone saying something that you did was dumb or stupid or whatever the harsh thing that we said um, to you actually being the one that says that you did something stupid uh, or dumb or what have you. So we really need to grasp the concept of when we are hearing something, whether it be from our own selves, our thoughts, that I did something dumb or stupid, uh, that, okay, yeah, what I did might have been stupid, but I am not stupid. What I did might be dumb, but I am not dumb. What I did might be rude, but I am not a rude being. I, in my being, my core, I am not that. So <clears throat> that needs to be understood. You need to understand the difference between I did and I am and question why you're concluding that someone would call you that as opposed to really stepping back and saying, hold on, that I can't agree. That was <laughs> what I did was dumb, but that's not who I am. And, and Michelle, you're writing because again, that's pretty much uh, the way that I'm going to introduce the actual <laughs> thing that we need to really dive into. Um, but that's basically what I wanted to start with, but you wrote, so wh wh what are your thoughts? Um just my, reflecting on my own life and just experiences with people, again, as a manager. But we tend to internalize our actions or, we, or responses about our actions as a, as a reflection of the root of the decision that made the poor decision. And we get put more weight on, why did I make that decision? If I was, if I was perfect, if I was good enough, if I was right, then I wouldn't have made that decision or I wouldn't have done that thing versus it's simply a miscalculation uh, or a misstep. Uh, and it's so easy from just having unpacked so much of my life in the past and realizing that I ascribed a lot more weight to things that people said versus, like you said, who I am. I internalized and, and archived it, alphabetized it, put it in the file as must be a part of my character. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and therefore, I must always default to that when yeah. that's not necessarily the case. And so it's interesting to just juxtapose I did against I am. So it's, I see it all the time and I'm curious as to how you will lay it out. Oh my gosh, like this was what the t was going to be until God said, no, it's not, that's a surface. Even you who pride yourself on seeing past the surface, you missed it. And I need you to uh, specify and really address what the actual topic is. And, um, and, and I can assure y'all what you all will realize is how subtle, but how powerful and how heavy this topic is. And um, actually that it is something deeper than fear and stress and anxiety and sickness itself. And, um, and the actual topic that we're gonna be talking about tonight is, is guilt and condemnation. Um, so that is what we're actually going to be talking about tonight. So the heavy lifting is on this thing called condemnation and the guilt and all the other things that come with it, the fear and the stress and anxiety that are followed by it. That is the root of, I can pretty much assure you almost everything that you're having issues with your self-esteem or your relationship uh, with. And if we can get this right, uh, I can assure you, you'll be, get, you'll be able to get a lot of other things uh, right. And uh, first, I want to start by defining what uh, condemning means. Uh, so first, 
I'm going to start by, because uh, there's, of course, in the English language, there's so many different definitions to words. But these three really, really help to bring home what I want to address on tonight. And the first definition of, of condemning is, or to, to condemn is to express an unfavorable or adverse judgment on or indicate strong disapproval of. I'll say that again, to express an unfavorable and adverse judgment on or indicate strong disapproval, disapproval of. The second definition that I want to bring to light is to pronounce to be guilty and sentence to punishment. To pronounce to be guilty and to sentence to punishment. And the last, the last one is to judge or pronounce to be unfit for use or service. This is, I'm already kind of misty, but I'm, I'll read that again. To judge or pronounce to be unfit for use or service. This is condemnation. This is the trick of the enemy. This is what we do to ourselves on a day-to-day -day basis. And we don't even realize that we're doing it. And it is literally destroying your self-esteem, the way you look at yourself, and also in turn, the way that you look and you speak to other people. And because we condemn ourselves all the time, we are slowly creating our own demise, um, whether it be us or our relationship. And it's really a battle between an evil conscience and a good conscience. So, It's, it's, it's our nature, <laughs> and, and I apologize for those who aren't believers. Again, this is going to be heavy. It is what it is. Our nature is sin or negativity or evil, that evil conscience. And we naturally see, you, it's like anything. You can, you can have a whole day full of great Compliments to calls, but that one negative thing is the thing that you're going to hold on to and you're going to move through and, and feel and own as what is truth or that or allow that to actually hinder or ruin your day. That is just that's that's our go to. And and we don't even realize how much we say, well, that was dumb or call ourselves dumb or call other people dumb. And when they receive it because they already call themselves that. They get frustrated at the fact that you call them something that they're already calling themselves <laughs> and adding to the, the, the actual fuel that they've already been um, started the fire to. So it's, it's a consistent like beating and tormenting of ourselves, which in turn um, just really, really destroys us. And go ahead, Michelle, because before I dive into uh, – how to look at this and how to even defeat it. Cause again, this is not a long show, but we definitely have to identify this and, and, and actually put a stop to it. But go ahead, Michelle. I think when you put words to how we behave and, a, the, and that we've accepted as normal, like you said, it's a go-to. Most of us have accepted as normal a invisible layer of condemnation or self-loathing right? Because you, you, you've now put yourself as prisoner. It's almost like, and I, and I saw in my mind how we treat people who get out of jail. Like hmm. we, even if you, you've done time, right? You still, they carry it so and they, they move through the world restricted and unable to do some things because of what they believe about having been a prisoner, even if they've done their time. So even if we get to this point where we're awoke and we realize that we're loved, we still walk around like, but I did my time. Yeah, so yeah. I don't get 
I have to put down on the application that I've done time. Now you, you're going to judge me. So you still carry that. I'm not enough. And it's just, um, I speak much from my own experience as well. Like you go into things and you're like, I know I'm loved, but I can say all the right things and I can put it all on. But inside, I know I'm probably going to have to put on this application that I was a criminal or, and yeah. how are they going to judge me? And, and it's just, it's something that you can't escape unless you escape it in your heart or in your mind. But it is, yeah. that's what I saw when you were talking was yeah. just how we, we, are, we make ourselves prisoners because we believe the condemnation. And then we act like a prisoner even when we get out. And we, and we never vote. We never vote. We walk around as citizens. Maybe we even get in the world, but we never vote. We never participate. We never see ourselves as a, as a full citizen ever again, if we're not careful. That was the perfect description. Um, and, and that goes along with it because we, we, we self-sentence ourselves. We allow the mistakes that we've made to sentence ourselves. So we're literally indirectly going through life in different categories. And we are putting that I'm a felony on the application when it comes to that. And, um, and because you've written, I have a felony, um, you get, you judge yourself and you already, you know, yeah, uh, most certainly, most certainly. And, 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 and again, that, that was before I, I, for lack of a better term, realized and mastered this, um, that was what prevented me from succeeding, being able to receive gifts or wealth because I felt I wasn't worth worthy. Why? Because of this list of things that I've condemned myself uh, as per the definitions uh, to judge or pronounce to be unfit for use or service. Godly. To pronounce to be guilty, sentenced to punishment, to express an unfavorable or adverse judgment or indicate strong disapproval of. I, that was the thoughts that I allowed to be believed about myself. And it prevented me from being able to be loved by myself, reap the benefits that were accessible to me, and also be loved by others. And it wasn't until I was able to realize, which is why y'all hear me so boldly say, I am to die for. <laughs> and for you to be able to hear me say, Say what I say, know where I'm coming from, and be unapologetic about it and be able to transition after I've stated what I know that I've done, but understand that I am not. And I'm able to move forward because of that, because I understand and I do not condemn myself. Because I've been relieved of that. I've had a price paid for that. And I cannot... I cannot, there's no punishment. It, it, it's, it, yeah, it's, it's double jeopardy. Everything that I've already been quote unquote condemned for, whether it be my past or my future, it's already been judged and someone took the actual, the, uh, the, the, the brunt of it for me. And I'm forever grateful. I'm forever grateful and I'm going to walk in it and I'm not going to let it be done in vain. So... <laughs> Um, before we transition on how to move forward on that, uh, you have anything you got to say before I start tearing up? Because this is, this is liberty. It is so true because it's at our, <laughs> it's at our heart soul level that we don't accept a pardon. No, oh, man, it's good. It's yeah. like if someone pardons you, like you said, it's double jeopardy. There, there is nothing else to do. You, it's been erased. You can move forward, and we fight the part, the pardon. Like we never really accept the pardon, and mm -hmm. and are living beneath our means in terms of self love and self actualization. When and again, I, we, it's it's a difference between intellectually understanding it and truly, like you said, knowing. That's so and knowing is a different space. It's a different space. <laughs> it is. It is. Miss Ann, uh, Lisa said, uh, when someone does something wrong or says something wrong that you don't like, it shouldn't be a life sentence. That life sentence can be for you 
or for them. And that is so true. And um, we do it all the time. So I just want us to be mindful of that. It's pointing out your faults and shortcomings. It's feeling like you ought to have negative feelings about yourself because of your sins or uh, and unworthiness. We do it all the time. Uh, I don't deserve that. Like, why don't you deserve that? Why can't you have that? Who told you that? And, and how do they qualify? Where did that come from? It comes from us. And it comes from the little subtle voices that are in our head that we accept as truth and they're BS. They're crap. They're not real. And, and, and the irony in that is when I say BS, I mean by Satan. <laughs> Woo! You better have to on that one. So, so, so what I mean by that is because, again, I had to go and, and, and really dig in this. And what I mean by BS by Satan is um, the original, and I hate to go here, um, but again, I had to study on this before I could present this to y'all. Yes. The original, the original Hebrew word for Satan is Hasatan or Hasatan, which means the accuser. <laughs> it, the the Hebrew word for Satan means the <laughs> accuser. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Pause for just a moment. <laughs> Pause for just a moment. We just likened talked about condemnation, which we internalized. And we likened it to a prison sentence that we have accepted, right? We've, we've allowed ourselves to we put the shackles on and we went into the jailhouse, even if it wasn't justified, by an accuser who <laughs> lied. You better who lied. Breathe. You better who lied. Breathe. That's all I'm saying. What we're dealing with right now is a whole bunch of like, accusations that lies that we have bought for years mm. and, and we are and, put ourselves in limitation buying the lie yeah yeah and, and i'm and i'm i'm sorry like i literally feel sorry for you if you don't believe in in spirituality because this if you can't see it you cannot seize it you can't grasp it and grab a hold of it so that you can stop if you it. Doing it you're gonna have to pause if you can't see it you can't what if you can't see it s-e-e -E, you can't seize it c-e-a-s-e -E, you can't seize it you can't grasp it you can't get control over it. and if you're thinking things that just happen haphazardly you will not be able to get control over it so when you hear those little whispers in your ear telling you that you're bad things i can assure you that's not you it's not you and, and because you hear it in your conscience, that is what you've concluded to be you saying it. And that's not what it is. It's, it's, being, it's something being suggested to you for you to believe. And it's not until you believe it and accept it that you begin to walk into it. And a lot of us are walking into stuff that we are allowing something to be suggested to us. That's not us. It's not us. It's, it, it's we're, what we're being accused of. And we're condemning ourselves and it's not even us condemning ourselves. We're being influenced to condemn ourselves because we don't know ourselves. We have the pardon. We have the papers. Our sentence has been pardoned. We have the paper. And we walk through and people are going, you this, you that, you this. And you're like, no, 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 no. But it's funny because as you started out the way you framed it, people, what, when, you, when you accept the pardon hmm. and move when you are pardoned, you stand out like an anomaly because everybody else has agreed that we are all in prison together. Exactly. And you're like, but I got out. So, so that's why to a lot of people, I look like I'm, I'm cold hearted. I am uh, like, I have no feelings or whatever. No, I have a feeling, but I have the right feeling. See, good, good, <laughs> good, <laughs> good living begins with good believing. So my beliefs are not yours. I don't share what it is that you think about me or that you think about yourself, which allows for me to live differently, which allows for me to walk and interpret and receive things differently. Now, I wish that I could think of a way to relieve you of condemnation, but I only know one way to do it. So if you can find another way, please, 
by all means, research it and find it. But I've only been able to find one. And that is through who I've always told you all that I am to die for, who the God that I believe in, he, he actually demoted himself to become a, a, a human flesh, a person, a mere being, just to die for me, to redeem me of my condemnation so that I could be set free of all the things that I'm trying to be accused of. And because I'm worth a God doing that for me, you cannot make me something that God said I'm not. You cannot get me to believe that I am less than something that he's already told me that I am. You cannot get me to de demote the value that I am because you don't, you say you don't love me when I have someone who is far greater than you, who's already expressed physically that I am to die for. No, you can't have that. So I will apologize for how I made you feel. I will even acknowledge what I have done that might have been stupid. But I will not allow for you to allow myself or allow for you to think that you can get me to believe that I am what I've done. I'm more than that. I'm better than that. And you too can be if you just knew and believed who literally did it for you to be able to have the freedom to say I say that you framed perfectly the the where you come from when you talk to people and don't judge them, mm. right? Because you refuse the same for them. You mm. refuse to see them as someone less than someone yeah. worth dying for. That's so that's, and is that not the source of love? Exactly Which is, right. if I see myself that way, <laughs> then I have to see you that way. That's exactly right. And therefore, I have to give you the grace that I've been given. Which is why self-interest is the foundation. Because the way that you see self, it will push out and it will be spread to others. And um, the way I encounter people, it's kind, it's like, it's, it's kind of like gold digging. And what I mean by that is, to find gold, you have to dig through the dirt. Amen. So every person that I see, no matter what they present to me, I'm looking past that dirt to try to find the gold that's already inside of them. So I don't get caught up in all the crap that I got to dig through because I'm too busy seeking to find the gold that's in them to help them realize what's already in them. So because I've done that for myself, I'm able to do that for you. And because I don't judge or condemn myself, I don't judge or condemn you, which makes you comfortable with sharing with me, which makes you comfortable with seeing the God that I believe in, which also makes you comfortable with receiving the God that I believe in, which in turn allows you to be liberated of your condem condem uh, condemnation. So we, uh, and, and it's why I am, statements are so powerful mm. because it tends mm. to shift the belief state belief from what i did to who i am all right so i need you to see something here you see that i am do you see that that was literally where i was headed so again i hate this is a bible this this turned out to be a bible so i told y'all that god made this heavy on me and i had to i had to go and, 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 and search. So first and foremost, in the Bible, which is what, what if you like no love, I'm sorry, but you like the Bible, whether you are, uh, whether you're a believer or not, everything that I teach you is coming from this truth. That's where hashtag nine came from and everything. So, so in the Bible, God only says his name about three times, okay? And we might call him Jehovah and, and all the other things, but when Moses went to God, he said, who do I tell them sent me? God's response was, I am sent me. Okay? So as a lot of you all that hear, oh, don't say God's name in vain, 
saying God uh, uh, or God, whatever, whatever you say when you use the word God, that's technically not putting using God's name in vain. But to say I am stupid, I am retarded, I am dumb. The only time he shared his name was when he said that his name was I am. So when you say I am and you put anything negative past that, you are using God's name in vain. And we were made in his image. And the reason why it's created so that we say when we introduce ourselves, I am Eddie, I am Michelle, is because you are supposed to put God before anything. So you are really saying I am. So God, I'm acknowledging God who I am made in a reflection of, and then this is who I am outside of him. So whenever you say I am and you say anything negative about yourself, that is actually using God's name in vain. So. Stop. I, <laughs> Just stop. Just stop. Hard stop. <laughs> Because, and that's the power that God actually gave us in the power of our thoughts and ability to communicate. And even when you break down, it's so cool that you started with why people feel some kind of way when you do certain things and then go back to, but it's really a reflection of yourself because of what you don't believe about yourself that's making you feel this kind of way. Because if you believed that you were fine, what I said doesn't make a difference. It wouldn't ever hit you that way That's so uh, good. and guilty <laughs> just saying but enlightenment comes in stages and that's what's also really cool is that again we use self-esteem and get we've gotten kind of numb to having low self-esteem but we when you say condemnation that's jarring when you say unworthy or or have been have done put into a sentence or when you say um, sentence to punishment, uh, strong disapproval, unfit for use or service, those are jarring terms. Mm. And when we realize that those things that we're saying are that jarring, and that's the pain that we feel, that's the, that's the separation that we feel, the isolation, the, again, like you just got out of prison and you know everybody's judging you because everybody knows you just got out of prison. And yeah, if they don't yeah. know when they find out, they're going to te- treat you like you just got out of prison. Yeah, but you put yeah. yourself there. We put ourselves there. I put myself there. Yeah. In prison. And then once I found out that I was pardoned, to not accept that, that is the epitome of self-loathing. Yeah, yeah. Because once yeah. you know that you are, you have been pardoned, you are not condemned. You are mm. not condemned. You have to, you have to change. And, and that's why I'm forever grateful that I accepted Jesus as my Lord and Savior and that the Holy Spirit dwells inside of me because the Holy Spirit was, was sent to, to actually remove the, the, the condemnation and to remind you of your righteousness. We make it about we sin. Think we make it about, we think, not about how we feel about we ourselves. We think that he is the one that is con- condemning us. And that's not what the Holy Spirit was sent. Like, first and foremost, I really need, like, we really need to read our Bibles, uh, for especially for those who claim that we're, we're believers. Um, because uh, the uh, do you really need, because we, we say that the Holy Spirit convicted me. First of all, that's not what the Holy Spirit did. And, and the only time you hear anything about the Holy Spirit convicting you in the Bible is when he said, the Holy Spirit has come back to convict the world. And if you consider yourself the world, you are not a believer because he wasn't talking about you. All right. So I need you to understand the context of what you read. But it does say that the Holy Spirit is to convict you of your righteousness, which makes absolute sense. Because if your natural nature is to convict yourself of your sins and failures, you need something that is higher to convict you that you are better than your sins and failures. Who, who needs something supernatural to remind you that you are a failure? Who need like, what do you need? You don't need no help in that area. We got that natural. down. We got that down. That is natural. 
the supernatural, the God that dwells inside of me, allows for me to realize my righteousness. I am the righteousness of God in Christ in me. So that is what allows for me to move and navigate through life more smoother than those who allow themselves to be condemned. And if you are being condemned as a believer, then you need to better or sharpen your tool when it comes to the Bible so that you can understand uh, that you're believing incorrectly about yourself. Because that is not what us as believers are supposed to suffer from. And that's what will allow for you to be moving a little lighter in life as opposed to this heavy burden that we've spent this whole time trying to uh, lift off of us called condemnation. Isn't what this is a great precursor and a perfect topic for the, the launch of no love, the, the app. Mm. Mm. Because if you go into the game, the simulation, understanding that condemnation is a factor, whether or not you've addressed it. Because mm. if you understand, mm. you go into this simulation knowing that condemnation, whether you condemning someone else or you condemning yourself, right. is a factor, you will make different decisions, which will ultimately position you to have stronger and healthier relationships, both with yourself and with her. And with the people that you have the privilege of connecting with. Because if, if once you recognize that condemnation is, a, is an issue, and I'm not going to say it's a reality or that it's, a, it's, it's mine. I'm not taking any ownership of it. I'm just saying that now I'm aware that it's, it's an issue That's and that mean. it was the accuser who lies, <laughs> who lies, that constantly is bringing that, then I can shut that mess down. That's so good. That's so good. I mean, if that's your concluding thought, it would be a perfect concluding that's thought. That's it. That's all I got. I can, add, I can add to that by saying this. This is my concluding thought. First of all, as usual, I'm truly grateful and honored to be your teacher. I'm truly grateful and honored that you share your ears, your minds with me, um, and that you have allowed for me to take you on this journey of love. Um, there's no other way that I could teach this topic today. Uh, so um, if anything, if you're not a believer, I hope it at least brings a curiosity that makes you want to consider at least reading what it is that you're literally listening to me give you information from. Um, <laughs> uh, um, but in the end, you, your mate, your spouse don't need help realizing that you or they are messed up. Y'all need help knowing that you're forgiven. That's you it. Say that again and slower. You, <laughs> your mate, your spouse don't need help realizing that you or they are messed up. Y'all need help knowing that you're forgiven. And when you get to that place and understand that, I can assure you, life for you, relationships for you will be so much better, so much easier, so much worth getting out of bed for. And that peace that surpasses all understanding uh, would be something that you would be able to resonate with. That's all I got for y'all. I love y'all. I hope to see y'all. Please send me y'all screenshots of the different um, cards and stuff or landing that spaces. That would be from noloveinc.com in case you came in late. It's <laughs> noloveinc. I did yeah. put it in the chat. Um, noloveinc.com. You can uh, definitely get anything about the app, um, about the podcast. You can go comment on old uh, shows, see old shows. It's the visual version of it but it's still the same thing because all, all I do is strip the visual version and, and make the actual audio version. Um, I just, I appreciate y'all. So go get um, registered. Everything is free because um, love is free. <laughs> so again, the download, to download the No Love app on iOS or Android, it's free. But if you don't, it could cost you your relationship. And that's, that's, that's what I'm going to leave you with. I love y'all <laughs> until we meet again. 
Y'all be safe. Peace. Talk to y'all later. Bye, y'all.